Hi, I'm Wendy Yee, and welcome to Painting the Dice Tower Library. Today I'm going to be sharing with you some of the miniatures that I painted for Wonderland's War. Today I'm going to be showing you the Queen of Hearts, the Jabberwock, the Sword in the Stone Battle Marker, and the Unicorn. So Wonderland's War has a lot of really cool colors going on with it. Some very cool artwork and characters. Um, Alice in Wonderland is just one of those fun stories that I enjoyed as a kid. I especially loved the the weird TV show Adventures in Wonderland. It's a very 90s sitcom, but I, I had a lot of fun with that. And so when I was pulling out this game to paint it, um, everything came in these little cardboard tokens, and that's what I based all of my miniatures off of. Um, but this little guy right here, this unicorn, this was definitely the first thing that stuck out to me. I, in my heart of hearts, I just absolutely love very bright, happy, fantastical things. So this unicorn right here was just the gem of that to me. And so this was the very first miniature that I painted off the get-go. I was like, I'm going to paint what I want to paint first just to get me go going and getting that, building that momentum. And so um, it was a pretty quick, easy paint job. So you just painted everything white on the body and I, I wanted to use a very, very white white because even though horses in real life tend to be kind of a, a dirtier white and they have kind of a mix of different colored hairs going on. This is magical and it's a unicorn so I thought it should be like stark white, um, beautiful and perfect like that. But then the hair was the fun part. Um, so when you're doing kind of this ombre effect or you're kind of moving from one color to another, what you want to do, uh, there's a couple different things that you can do to get that effect. But what I did um, is I took uh, the blue and I took the pink and I mixed some together and I, I mixed the far colors into the middle and so it kind of makes a purple color and then you want a purple color that's a little bit more towards the red side or a little bit more towards the blue side and so kind of pre-mixing those colors or having that concept in your mind of what the, the gradient's going to kind of look like really helps um, before you actually get paint onto the model. So this hair, especially in the back, as you can see, the pink is going to be in the deepest, most recessed areas. So I went ahead and I put that on first um, because it's really hard to get deep into areas after you've put something on the outside. Um, so I basically, I colored, I painted everything pink and I just kind of had the whole hair pink as it goes. And then that's when I started adding on the layers of those in-between colors. So um, using some, some kind of dry brushing effects where you get just a little bit of paint on your brush and then you, you brush off most of it. Um, and so I built up from there. So I went to that kind of pinky purple and then I went to a more genuine purple and then I went to a more bluish purple and then to the blue. And so building up those colors and kind of letting those layers progress is what can give you that kind of cool effect of it actually changing from one color to another. So I thought that was a lot of fun. Um, with this particular miniature and oh, the colors just make me happy. Blue and pink is beautiful. Let's move on to this Queen of Hearts here. I saw that she had a lot of cool stuff going on. She's got a lot of deep recesses with her arms and with the sleeves and all that's going on there. And um, I have a really good contrast red paint. And so this was me kind of experimenting with it. And so I went ahead and I put the contrast paint on her but I realized that around her hips, this area over here, around her hip, it's very flat. And that is one of the issues with the contrast paint. So these paints are made to basically meld and kind of get thicker in the deeper recesses. They're, they're a mix between a wash and an actual paint. And so what happens is that they are much more uh, translucent or transparent than a regular um, opaque color. So the, the deep recesses look awesome because they're a dark rich red and um, I didn't have to put a dark wash over it that might not have blended as well. You especially don't want to put a black or brown wash over a nice bright color like red because it's just going to muck it up. So luckily I have a red that kind of is a similar color um, to it and so I went ahead and I added some extra red over those hips and over those larger flatter areas that way it wasn't streaky. Um, as for her hat and stuff. I just, I really enjoy the, the way that she has these contrasts between the black and the white and the red. I think it's a very pretty color profile and I very much enjoy that. Um, the lines on the bands of her hat were a little tough to do because you have to be able to have a nice steady hand to get some of those lines. Um, and so one thing that I like to do sometimes is to work out. So the white is the most inner space. That's going to be the hardest one to, to get those clean lines on um, because it's a it's a tight space and so if you work outwards um, it's a little bit easier to get those lines and so doing that white line first and then 
anything that goes over into the black area is totally fine because then you're going to do the black line. Um, so then doing the black line kind of creates, it's a little bit easier to get that edge because I'm less worried about how thin my brush is and I'm more worried about just that edge. I'm not trying to fiddle with two different edges. Um, so doing that black line and then from there doing the red line on top. So I really enjoy what's going on there. She just got, she's got a lot of cool stuff. She's very pretty. I love the colors. So that is the queen of hearts. Now we have the Jabberwock. This guy is awesome. He was a lot of fun because in his picture, he's a very cool shade of green. And I didn't have a specific color that was this, this color. Like I have some teals, I have some blues, I have some stuff going on, but none of it matched what I wanted for him. And so as I was painting him, I kind of mixed some colors together and it wasn't quite what I wanted. And so I did a lot of that dry brushing with him. Um, and so, like I said before, you, you brush off as much as you can of paint that you've dipped in, and then you go over the top just very lightly and it kind of adds some enhancements. What it does is the most, the most outside parts of the miniature are what grab that last little bit of paint. Um, and so it creates some really cool effects. So basically I did a lot of dry brushing on him and that kind of allowed me to mix the colors in different layers to give me the color and the effect that I wanted with him. But it also shows off a lot of what's going on with his wings and you know his undersides. Um, underneath him is really cool. He's got these scales across his chest. And so because I had those different layers going on and dry brushing over the top, it let uh, the, the deepest shadowest, shadowiest part of him kind of show with that. Um, I also did the same thing with the, the stick that he's on or the tree or the leaf or the whatever it is um, that he is standing on. I did a lot of dry brushing as well with that to get the kind of brown that I wanted to once again have those deep layers and those upper layers. And so I think with that one, I also put a wash on. So I did like a base of brown. I put on a brown wash so that I could get in those deep crevices and then I dry brushed over the top. So he was tons of fun. Um, I then went in with some yellow on his eyes, some white on his teeth, nothing too fancy there, uh, but he makes me happy. Finally, we have this sword in the stone. I, I was excited about this because I enjoy painting rocks. As silly as it is, I enjoy very basic things because um, I feel like I can just mix colors and have fun uh, exploring shades of gray and such. So I had fun. Um, I used a lot of silver and gold paints that were very metallic-y uh, on this sword and then I wanted it to be a little less metallic and so my top coat took a lot of the shine out. But then after I put on the, the nice little red heart here, I threw in some wash because I wanted to, I wanted this sword to be gritty, right? It's, it's dirty, it's not a clean sword, it's been sitting here in this rock forever. So I added some washes to make it kind of dirtier looking to let those crevices show. And then I actually brushed a little bit of gold over the heart to make the heart a little bit shinier, to make it uh, look like it kind of blends in a little bit more. So there's some fun stuff that was going on with the sword. One thing with the with this particularly, and there was a lot of a lot of the pieces in Wonderland's War had this this issue. It's, they have shiny light on them. There's a lot of glare and shimmer and shine. Um, that's going on in some of these pictures. And so translating this from that, I just had to make some artistic decisions and I decided that I didn't want to have that, that glow that kind of seemed like it was coming from nowhere. Um, then the rock itself, I did gray, I did a, a black wash over it and some dry brushing of lighter colored gray to kind of give it a, a marbled more natural effect because rocks are not just a single color in life. And then uh, the cute little mushrooms, which honestly they look like donuts from the top. Uh, but I just thought that they were cute, that they'd be red and brown, and they look like they've got some wash on them as well to kind of get in those those crevices and such. So there's just some beautiful things that you can do um, with washing stuff. But there's, there's an entire game with lots of miniatures here, um, and I only picked four of them because... You know, there's there's so many you can do, but come to our conventions, come try them out, come play them, or make some yourself. Um, if you've got any cool pictures that you want to post on our Facebook page about the stuff that you've painted, um, especially for Wonderland's War, because these little puppies, they're so cute, they're so pretty, um, and there's a lot of great stuff there. So thanks for joining me today. I'm Wendy Yee, and this was Painting the Dice Tower. I hope you have a fabulous day, and enjoy painting.